Okay, hello. Let's go through the campaign section in Customer I.O. today. I feel like this is the busiest area in Customer I.O. It's where I've spent most of my time. And so there's a lot, a lot to dig in here. You find campaigns on the left-hand side and in the campaign little tab. So you click that and this is what opens up. It gives you a list of your existing campaigns that you have created and sorts them by default for the number of emails that have been sent in the last 24 hours. This is a new instance, so I don't have anything in there. Uh, but there's a couple of ways that you can actually filter and sort your campaign. So for example, I can sort by their name uh, and dates of when they were created and edited. I can also search by name or their description. I can filter based on what they're triggered by. So if I'm looking for only campaigns that are triggered by segments, I can do that. Uh, I can filter by status, which will show me uh, running draft or stopped. And then if I have my own organizational structure or tagging structure for my campaigns, I can sort by the tags that I've labeled them by. Uh, pretty flexible in how you want to view the campaigns that you've got in your instance. So let's go ahead and create a campaign and walk through what that looks like. Uh, you'll name it. So I'm just going to say this onboarding email ver version 2, and then I'll just say welcome email for new signups. I don't have any tags, so I'm not going to add any. The first thing that you will be asked to do is identify what triggers the campaign. There are five options. You can do it based on uh, <coughs> uh, people who are in a segment, if they move into one, or out of a segment. You can trigger people to move into campaigns if they perform an event. So this could be some app usage event that you have coming into Customer.io. You could... Uh, <coughs> Do it based on dates. So dates could be something like birthdays. And if you have the birthday for your contacts and you want to send annual um, emails around that, you, you can do use those as a trigger. Form submissions, which is pretty standard across marketing automation platforms. And then uh, web hooks, if you <coughs> need a little bit more custom stuff, need it integrated with like an app or pulling data from somewhere else. Uh, webhooks would be the option. We're going to not go into details on all of those. We're just going to keep it simple and do a segment. So when you've chosen that you want to use segments, you will add the segment. So I'm just going to say anybody who signed up. Now, <clears throat> there might be scenarios where people come into these campaigns and they match this here, but there could be things that mean you want to actually exclude them. You can add additional filters here to say like, okay, I want, say, everybody who signed up to come in, but if they signed up and are paying customers, I do not want them, right? So if they've signed up and are to be sent any messages, they must not be in the paying customer segment, okay? <clears throat> so this doesn't trigger it. It just, it just forces the system to make sure that they, uh, match the rules in order to send messages. Uh, <clears throat> frequency, you can decide whether or not you want people to receive this campaign multiple times and re-entry. There's a couple of ways to do that with like a segment. Um, every time they rematch the uh, segment parameters, they can come back in, but they do have to leave and come back. Or you could do it at fixed intervals, and so long as they still match, they come back in. Frequency for segments by default is uh, a single time, so just not more than once. For events, it's the reverse. They come in every time uh, it's been, the event's been fired. A couple of additional settings, you can decide whether you want to send to unsubscribe people, uh, or if you have a limit of messages for your account that you don't want, that you have set, like contacts can only receive a certain number of messages, so let's say per week. You can decide whether or not you whether or not you want these messages to count towards that limit. Okay, so I'm going to hit save and next, and now we're into the canvas. This is the busy area where you spend all your time building. 
uh, <clears throat> I will just walk through the options here on the left. And, and it's really easy in terms of like adding, you have these options and if you want one, you just choose to drag it over and uh, it will show up in the canvas. All right, four sections in terms of what you can build with your campaigns. There are messages, data, delays, and flow control. Uh, messages <clears throat> are exactly what it sounds like. So you can send emails if you've got it hooked up to send like a mobile app or an application to send push notifications if you've set that up yet. Slack messages if you have your Slack workspace connected. And then if you have, you're using Twilio SMS, you can send SMS messages uh, as well. You drag, like I said, you drag and drop the steps onto the canvas and then you click into them and that's where setup happens. And we won't go do a deep dive there. That'll be for another video. Uh, uh, <clears throat> is anything regarding uh, moving, altering, updating your data in customer IO? So you can create or update people. You can create an event to people that shows up. You can do something called a batch update. And in this one, <clears throat> let's say a single person triggers a campaign, but based on their action, you want to update, let's say everybody with the same, in the same account. You can update uh, people that match certain conditions based on uh, that one individual. <coughs> Excuse me. You can add or remove people from manual segments. You can query what's called a collection, and this is like data, let's pretend like an event series. Let's say you have an event series on information stored in Custom IO, and you want to query that data. You can use collections to do that, and that's the step you would use. And then send and receive data here uh, is webhooks. So, <coughs> a little confusing when you first, excuse me, <coughs> finding something. A little confusing when you first see it, but it's a webhook, and, uh, that you can send and receive data that way. All right. Then the rest of the options are what you, how you control when and where people pass through your whole canvas. So the first section is delays, and essentially all three are different kinds of wait steps. <clears throat> there is a wait step that's based on uh, conditions. So again, you can use segments, events, attributes directly in here. So let's say that they get to this step, but I want to wait. They, I won't move them forward until they have signed up. Then you could do that. <coughs> the uh, time delay is exactly what it sounds like. You just um, add a certain number of days or hours for that someone will be um, stuck in that step until they move on. Or a time window will allow you to choose days and times within a specific period. So let's say that you only want to send emails until, like you don't want to send emails until it's like working hours. You'd use a time window for that. Flow control is where you start making more than like a linear path like you see we've done here. So the true or, fa true or false branch is based on a segment or a condition, and if they match it, it goes down true, and obviously false goes down the different path. You can make more uh, intense logic with multi-splits, and you would decide, let's say I'm using segments, you would decide segment triggers for each different path. And you can have lots of different paths here. Um, I honestly don't even know if there's a limit, so pretty flexible in terms of control. If you need to randomize paths, let's say you're, you have um, like your own <coughs> A-B sort of test framework you want to do or different uh, paths that aren't dependent on specific attributes, you can randomize it and distribute um, contacts down paths uh, according to a distribution framework that you choose. And then you can choose to remove people from the campaign.
So those are all the uh, options within the campaign canvas. When you have your campaign ready, then you uh, move over to a goal. Now, <coughs> a goal determines essentially a single uh, set of conditions that prove that they did what you wanted to do, usually done by either somebody performing an event or if they enter or leave a segment. So let's again say <coughs> we have a bunch of prospects on our list and we're trying to get them to sign up. So we're determining that a goal would be they enter the sign up segment within one week of opening any of our emails in this campaign. And it would count as a conversion. Uh, you can be a little flexible too with what causes people to leave because there might be scenarios where if they meet the conversion goal or uh, <coughs> based on other filters, you don't want them to receive the rest of the campaign, right? So you can have them move through the entire campaign or uh, they can exit when they meet the conversion goal or uh, let's say they don't match the trigger anymore, they can, that can force them to leave. So it's up to you on how you wanna decide when people leave your campaigns. And then that's the extent of creating a campaign in Customer I.O. Uh, when it's all said and done, they'll have you review. And <clears throat> when you first launch, like in a segment campaign, you can choose to either put everybody that already matches the existing trigger segment and push them through, or you can make it so that only future additions do um, your choice. There's been, you know, there are scenarios for both. And that's the essential overview. I hope that's helpful. And uh, we'll see you till, around until next time.